You want to pass to Governor Martin? I'd like to call the Strategic Planning Committee together. Mike, you want to call the roll? Uh, Mr. Colson. Present. Frost. Present. Present. We'll say he's not here. Mr. Perez is here, but he's not out of the room. Uh, Dr. Solano? Here. Uh, Mr. Root, are you on the phone? No. Uh, Mr. Martin, you do have a form. Okay, thank you. As we begin to sort of our discussion regarding strategic planning, we're now moving into a very unique phase. Uh, the last three days has been very, very important as we begin to frame the strategic planning process and, and how this committee will be engaged in reviewing all the university work plans and ultimately uh, approving university each of their uh, strategic plans but also developing an overall strategic plan for the state university system. So I think for the new members and also for the old members as well, uh, having each university to present their work plan has been very, very informative and we ha all have a better appreciation for the uniqueness of each of our uh, 11 universities and we really do have a great university system. So just to kind of give you a brief snapshot of what this committee will be involved with over the next year or so. Uh, again, based on the foundation that has been laid for the past uh, several days, uh, staff will continue to work uh, with each of the universities uh, to refine uh, the work plans. Uh, we will be receiving the individual strategic plans from each university and approving those at the appropriate point in time. We're also going back and uh, making sure that the information that we had developed before in terms of the uh, university uh, work plans uh, for the uh, beginning of this year, uh, they will be developing, I guess, uh, some web-based <laughs> software that will become a little more interactive as they begin to transfer that information uh, from the current system into a new system. And the Chancellor will be working very closely with the uh, Higher Education Coordinating Council. So this committee will be working with him as well in that regard. And that's going to be very, very critical as well as we begin to develop what is the overall mission for our system, what is the overall mission for the state college system, and how we can do a, a better job in cross uh, planning uh, to make sure that we are addressing the needs uh, of the state, both on a local and a regional level. With that, um, today we will have a number of uh, presentations from various staff and the staff that we have that primarily supports our committee, uh, Dr. Dollar, uh, Donna Minear, uh, <coughs> Dr. Nancy McKee, Richard Stevens, and also Vicki Shirley. Those will be the individuals that will be primarily working uh, with our committee uh, to help in anything that we may need as we uh, attack our mission over the next year. So with that, I would like to uh, have the second item, the approval of the minutes. So uh, moved. Been moved and second. All those in favor, and keep by saying aye. Aye. Those against? Okay, the minutes are approved unanimously. We will now move on to item number three. Uh, the principles to guide the development of the State University policies related to planning and the approval of educational sites. This is an item we just want to tee it up, quite frankly, to get your initial input uh, based upon uh, the discussion the past several days. We have a number of different sites within the various uh, uh, system. And basically the, the reason that we're having this discussion we don't really have anything now that governs this process. We want to get your initial feedback. We're not asking for your approval today. We just want to make sure that you're aware of the process, that we will be engaging. There will be ongoing feedback and dialogue as we begin to refine and come back to the committee with a specific uh, regulation at the appropriate time. So I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Nash McGee and Richard Stevens to come to the podium and make a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At the last Strategic Planning Committee meeting, um, 
I'm sorry, at the last strategic planning committee meeting, the staff presented to you the current regulation on educational sites. And if you'll remember, that regulation was adopted by the former Board of Regents. So it doesn't even mention the boards of trustees, the planning processes are out of date, the terminology needs to be reviewed and updated. So it needs a major rewrite. The board staff will be working with university staff this summer to undertake that rewrite. But we need to make sure that we're headed in the right direction. If you will look behind the strategic planning tab on page 14, you'll see that we have seven principles that we wanted to make sure that these were the principles that you wanted us to keep in mind as we move forward in updating that regulation. If these principles are the ones that you want us to keep in mind, then the next step would be to actually put those principles into operation. So if you will turn to the next page, page 15 and 16, you will see various concepts outlined that we would be using in developing the regulation. Now most of these concepts are pretty straightforward. We would be developing criteria, we would be developing planning processes, we would be including the boards of trustees in the educational science processes. There are a few though that I would like to bring to your attention because they do reflect differences in the way that things are currently being handled. So on page 15, if you would look at number two, providing for reasonable and responsible geographic access to university programs and services, if you would focus on item C, dealing with lower level courses. The current regulation says that universities are not to offer lower level courses away from the main campus unless they receive approval from the Board of Governors. Now this concept would say that um, the Board of Governors would delineate circumstances under which the universities could start offering lower level courses. So that's a slight change from the way that things are being handled now. On page 16, if you would look near the top of the page under G, that would, oh, I'm sorry, may, may, Governor. May yes. I ask before we? Certainly. Um, so what does that mean? Does that mean that the, board, the university won't come to us, doesn't need to come to us anymore and explain how they're going to offer um, a quality education in a, on a branch campus to an undergraduate um, as long as they set up some rules of themselves? Uh, it would strictly be dealing with lower level students. And currently, they, they are not supposed to offer lower level courses unless they come and get specific approval to offer those courses on a branch campus. So what we're proposing here is letting the board establish overall criteria or circumstances under which the universities would be, offered to, uh, would be able to offer those lower level courses. Um, for example, um, if a university has specialized degrees that the local community college doesn't offer lower level courses that would support those degrees, then maybe the university should be able to offer the lower level courses on their branch campus. But we would have to talk through those concepts with the universities and see if we could craft something that would give our board the confidence that um, there is local communication with the community colleges, confidence that the courses that are offered are ones that should be offered. So we would be setting the framework, not necessarily requiring that every instance would require coming back to the board for approval. Well, personally, and that's fine, and I'm okay with that, but I, I have a concern that when you, when you do these branch campuses about the quality of the instruction that happens at these branch campuses, when you know, are, are all you providing are instructors and no tenure track faculty at these branch campuses and things of that nature. And, and so, and, and I think that there's some universities who have a bunch of branch campuses that are probably saying, you know, how do we do this now? Um, so, that, that's my concern in this area. Okay. Okay, if you will look on the next page, on page 16 near the top of the page, G, that would be 4G, that's dealing with the respons shared responsibility with the boards of trustees. G says that um, we would include in this regulation 
um, we would address international educational sites and out-of-state educational sites. The current regulation does not mention out-of-state or international sites. And you heard in the work plans that were presented over the last two days that a lot of the universities are very interested in um, either establishing or expanding their presence in other countries. So the regulation would um, bring both of those instances underneath um, the board regulation. In 5C, we have another concept that, that we are proposing. The regulation would include triggers for notification of the chancellor and or the board regarding the potential acquisition, creation, reclassification, re relocation, or closing of specified sites. Um, Currently, we have heard frustration by some of the board members that you find out what's going on with sites by reading about it in the newspaper. So we propose to um, include triggers for notification of either the chancellor or the board when certain um, considerations are being made by the boards of trustees. And then the last item I'd like to bring to your attention is under 7A. The current regulation does not address the process for closing educational sites. We're proposing that we do address that in some manner in the board regulation to provide guidance to the universities and um, to provide um, an expectation from our board as to what you want to see when the site is closed. So, Mr. Chair, if if these are the principles and the concepts that the committee would like for us to move forward with, then we can get this underway working with universities as soon as the meeting is over. Thank you. Could you just take a few minutes and just go through the other information that's also included in the packet, just very, very quickly, just to make sure that <clears throat> each one of the board members understand. And we try to give you an inventory of everything in the system so that we have some reference point as we address these issues. Okay. If you will look on page 17, you have a map of the educational sites in the state. And, and I will tell you that we were unable to get all of the sites on the map. Um, for example, here in Orlando, there were so many that it turned into a blob when we tried to add a site for, for each presence. But that does give you an idea of, of um, where the sites are located in the state. Then on page 18, we asked the universities um, to provide an inventory for us back in February of what their educational sites were. So these are self-reported educational sites. But that gives you an idea of the number of each type of site. On page 19 through 22, then you can look at those sites by institution. And I will tell you that, that we noticed a couple of ones that were not included in the inventory. Um, they were recently approved sites that may not have had students on them and so weren't reported by the universities. But this does at least give you an idea of the sites throughout the state. And then on pages 23 through 25, you see the current classifications and what the criteria are for sites being classified in those particular categories. Um, those categories will be reviewed to see if they are still relevant in today's environment. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the committee? Um, again, this was just to tee this conversation up, to begin the dialogue. Uh, staff will uh, work to develop the revised regulation. We wanted to make sure that uh, the guiding principles, the seven guiding principles have been laid out. Are we on the right track? If we're not, let us know. Are there certain areas that we need to add or delete? We would like to have the feedback from you. So if, if there's any feedback today, fine. If not, make sure that you get the information uh, to staff at the appropriate time. Okay. Chancellor? Mr. Chair, just uh, to close it out, I, I did want to want to emphasize something that I think Governor Colson began. And that is, you could look at this as a rather mundane exercise in terms of what's the difference between a site and a campus and a main campus and try to better categorize and catalog those things for the future of the system. But I think uh, you can also see how many tentacles come off of this issue. 
I'm not sure whether this is the, uh, the front or the back of the issue, but at the end of the day, you do get into issues of access, quality of offering, in, uh, how does this fit into the overall enrollment picture of a university? We had some of those conversations yesterday. Um, you know, the, the, the faculty makeup, all of those kinds of important issues ultimately are a big part of the difference between what is an educational site versus a branch campus versus a main campus. And you, you can't take one without the other. So at the end of the day, in the strategic plans of the individual universities, as their boards reflect on where they are and perhaps where they may want to grow or uh, decrease the number of campuses or sites that they're offering or vary their location, it, isn't, it is far more complicated than simply saying, let's add another campus or let's close down an educational site because those decisions have broad-based ramifications not only on the institution but then therefore the system. Mr. Go Governor Morton, yes. I just have a comment on some of the pages here. Identification of sites, you're using different terminology. Sometimes you're saying in the main campus, the branch campus, which is fine. Instructional centers, special purpose centers, uh, and now you're talking about other things. Where do you see these definitions? For example, uh, Florida State has instructional centers all over the world, it looks like. Uh, I mean, lucky for the students, they can go to Italy or England or Spain, and then they have special purpose centers uh, in various parts of the state, I mean, all over the state. Uh, is there a definition somewhere that I'm missing as to what? Um, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, yes. if uh -huh. you look on pages 23, 24 and 25, you'll see all of the different types of sites and then the criteria that are required in order to be um, categorized as that particular type of site. I see, but I do concur with uh, Governor Colson that uh, what are you really talking about in terms of maybe we could have a little better definition than, thank you by the way, for letting us know are these adjunct professors that are instructing in these sites, wherever this is? Are they approved by the main campus? Are they just coming in to fulfill a requirement because um, we don't have that purpose at the main campus? I think it's very vague still, so I'm not so sure that taking away the responsibility of the Board of Governors is necessarily the right thing to do right now. I know there is a draft here and we're looking at it and we're supposed to be getting more feedback from staff, but I sort of concur with Governor Colson that I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that we might need someone to teach something in a local store because, well, maybe the main campus didn't have it available. So I, I know this is just a draft, and I'd like more information is all I'm saying also. Right. And, and the purpose of this process is not to take any pro, you know, authority away from anyone, just to clarify and update the existing regulations to make sure that we're covered in terms of these sites. Okay. And staff, mm -hmm. you want to kind of just maybe reiterate what we're doing here? Just, just a clarification. The, the definitions and the criteria yeah, are, are the ones that are in the current regulation, which we recognize as being out of date and yes, needing to be reviewed and, and clarified. So we're, we're there with okay. you on that one. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll now move on to item four. We have two items that uh, would like to publicly notice our intent. Uh, item four, public notice of the intent to programmate uh, amended BLG regulation 1.001, .001, University Board of Trustees, powers and duties. Okay, Vicki Shirley. Okay. Uh, thank you, Governor Martin. Yes, uh, this proposed amendment 
is to conform paragraph 5 of regulation 1.001, .001, which establishes the powers and duties of the boards of trustees, uh, to conform it with the university governance agreement that this board entered into with the legislature and the governor this past March. Uh, pursuant to that agreement, the board is recognized as having exclusive control over the personnel of the university, including the presidents. Uh, as part of the discussions, we agreed that instead of ratifying university candidates selected by university boards of trustees, they would be subject to a confirmation process, uh, which is similar to the confirmation process that the Senate uses to approve board members. So we have changed the terminology in the agreement from ratification to confirmation. There is also additional language in the proposed amendment that would require a two-thirds vote of this board if it was the intent of this board to deny uh, confirmation of the presidential candidates selected. So this is just being, at, we're asking you today to approve the notice of intent to publish this regulation for public comment. And it would come back to the full board for approval at our meeting in September. September. That's correct. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in indicate by saying aye. 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 Those in favor or against it? Okay. Motion unanimously carries. We now move on to item number five, which is also a notice of public intent. And this is uh, regarding BOG Regulation 9.012, requiring disclosure of gifts from foreign governments and persons. Thank you, Governor Martin. Yes, uh, this is a new proposed regulation that had its a genesis in a bill filed during this past legislative session that would have required the universities to disclose any gifts that they receive from any foreign government, foreign person, or foreign entity, and any terms and restrictions on those gifts related to the control of curriculum, faculty, student admissions or fees, or the award of an honorary degree to the Department of Revenue. During the governance discussions, it was agreed by the legislature and uh, the chancellor that this was really the more suited to a board regulation because it lies within our governance operating sphere. So we have, we have proposed language that parallels the statutory language except the reporting will be an annual reporting requirement to the Board of Governors so we can capture this information at the system level and then provide it to legislative leadership as requested. Move it. Second. Okay, it's been moved and probably a second. All those in, indicate uh, in favor by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously carries. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we are now on item six, closing comments and adjournment. Um, again, I think that the past several days has been very, very informative and educational for us to get a better feel for what's going on at each one of our 11 universities, the unique missions that, that they have. And I'm very encouraged with the uh, new committee structure and ask that if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. Uh, we're up for uh, some challenging issues that we will be addressing going forward, and uh, welcome aboard. With that, any comments from any committee members? I'd like to make a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. Before you close out your meeting, I just want to um, offer a word of thanks because um, it was really through your conversations with the Chancellor that we ended up with the type of meeting that we have this time. I know that you were uh, felt somewhat challenged over the last year because you had to work as a committee of the entire board, and so we tried to accommodate that by, by giving you a, a smaller number to work with. But just want to thank you for your insight and understanding that we needed to take some extended time like this, have a retreat format in order to give your, your committee the foundation to do its work. So just wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you. And with that, the committee is adjourned. Mikey, how are we doing on time? Good, great. Well, it was a little early, actually. Oh, wow. Does that give, does that pass this down to Mr. Tripp? Thank you. I'd like to call to order the uh, audit and compliance committee. And uh, could you take the roll, please? Sure. Uh, Mr. Edwards. Yes. 